I'm Edie Lush, executive editor of Hub Culture. Really pleased to be joined by Oriel Frank. Thanks so much for coming along. Fantastic to be here in Glasgow. I know, during COP26. Incredible. Incredible mm. that we're actually here. Such a buzz, so much energy. Isn't it fantastic? Yeah. So you are the co-founder, chief product and sustainability officer for Elemis. I am. Tell me about the journey that you're on towards bringing Elemis into the sustainable development goals, B Corp, uh, sustainability in general. Yeah, well, 30 years ago, the brand was born here in the UK, and here we are, and it's a whole new era for the brand. Uh, about two years ago, we got acquired by the Lotstein Group, who are massive champions of sustainability. And they believe in the three pillars, the biodiversity, the climate, and the people. And what it really did for me as a co-founder, you know, you have to change. You can't just keep going on the pathway that you've been. And we've been through private equity and, you know, NASDAQ stock exchange. This was a new era for the brand. So it was super exciting. It made us pause and stop for a moment and just think, what are we doing here? We are creating products that are going into the environment. They're going down the plug hole. They're being used in people's bathrooms. They're being thrown into the waste. We've got to rethink this whole business mm. in terms of sustainability. So it's been, it's been absolutely fascinating. It's been a minefield of understanding, learning. I went to college, went to Cambridge University to mm. study, to try and get myself up a few levels to understand and fast track. Lots of time group team have been amazing. Um, and the first thing we did was we went out to the staff and we said, these are the sustainability development goals, 17 of them set at the Paris Agreement and which ones resonate with you. And they chose six wonderful goals, you mm. know. So those, the gender equality. Everything from good health and well-being, gender equality, education, yes. life on land, climate action, I mean, really bold. Yeah, and responsible consumption. Yeah. And actually, that, that was great to get down to six things, because you can't, it becomes actually such a large thing that you just don't know where to start. Mm. So we started with those six. And then each area we're looking at, so starting with the biodiversity. So biodiversity, what does that really mean? You know, that's everything in our world, that's everything to do with how we formulate. So are we the formulating products. the products mm -hmm. eco-friendly? And that means, is the product biodegradable when it goes down the plug hole? Mm. You know, you, people don't think about that. How, what happens once it goes mm. down, if you're in the shower or you're using a cleanser? Uh, what are the, what's the impact? of those plant extracts, those seaweeds, mm -hmm. those essential oils, you know, is it a positive impact? Is it fantastic that we're growing with these incredible growers? We have an organic farm that grows our roses in, in England, and we've mm. got an amazing starflower farm that grows starflower and echium. I mean, these fields are wow. beautiful, buzzing bees, and, and you know, but it's, you've got to think right down to the soil. Hmm. And actually, people don't even think about that when they're putting their product right. on. So we've got to really start with the soil and the environment and make sure that we reduce the impact. So that's a real new way of thinking for us. So that's the biodiversity. We're also thinking long term, we're going to be growing and growing and growing this brand. You know, it's growth. It's, it's incredible. We're going to have impact. So how do we re what do we give back to nature? So mm. we're looking at projects around the country that we can actually support in regenerative farming, um, peatlands, mm -hmm. moorlands, uh, seaweed farms. So really thinking a bit outside the box, outside of the cosmetics world. Right. Think we're going to actually have to do some good in the world to sort of offset what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And then comes uh, climate. And that was like, where do we start? Right. <laughs> Greenhouse gas emissions is where lots of time starts because it, they say there's a crisis. We have all got to try and reduce mm. down this Code global red. warming. Code red. So that's actually, again, simplifies it for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where we're going to start. The first thing they said, uh, do you measure your... And I'm like, no. So we had to <laughs> <Not> start. Not yet. <laughs> but we do now. We worked with Qantas mm -hmm. and we measured. It took a huge amount of energy and time, resource, but we measured our greenhouse gas emissions. And the biggest thing I learned, our biggest emissions is our consumer using our product. Wow. It's not our electricity or our gas, which is minimal. It's the consumer cleansing their face with three litres of water and it's warm water or in the shower it's 35 litres. Interesting. So, so that's a really holistic view of your product from the yeah. moment it comes from the soil to all the way from the consumer yeah. washing it off. So that was a bit of a bing moment. Right. So we, we went out to 600 of our beauty therapists and we questioned them how do they cleanse. 
Could you think about cold water cleansing? Mm -hmm. Could you think about using less water? Could we reduce from three liters down to half a liter? Mm -hmm. Could so we're going to hopefully start to change people's behavior as well hmm. because it's actually going to affect our whole greenhouse gas emissions. So that's been an enormous learning curve. Um, putting all our supply chain through Ecovardis to make sure you know we we can be as responsible for of right. what we control, but what about the rest of the supply chain? Um, and really, the the circular economy. That's something again. I I wasn't really thinking how mm -hmm. that could be applied. So we went back to the sort of principles of five R's, which I love, and starting. What's the most? What's the one we'll start with? Do you know what? We'll start with what can we remove? Mm -hmm. What don't we need? Do we need spatulas in every single box? The plastic spatula right. that every everyone says actually I just throw it away. Mm. I never I use it once, but yeah. You know, and the therapists say, oh, but it, you know, need clean product. But actually, the majority of people don't use one. Right. If you want one, you can have one. But yeah. So we remove those overnight, like literally mm -hmm. 1.7 tons of plastic gone. Leaflets, you know, huge pressure to have everything in the leaflets. Right. Right. Technologies change that. You can just look at it on your phone. The QR codes, yeah. straight. So get rid of all the paper. So that was too easy once. Mm. Then we looked at our cartons. They have this sheen over them to protect them for luxury. You know, mm -hmm. they don't get damaged. Can't recycle that board. Right. Change it. So we've changed that. Hmm. Quite not quite as beautiful, but you know what? To me, it's more beautiful because right. you can recycle it. Mm. So that was. There were some really quick wins. Christmas was another one. We were do Christmas is big or holiday in America. They call it. Uh, we had beautiful magnets that closed. You know. That right. The magnets are not doing any good when they're in the ground. Right. 37,000 magnets we don't need. Gone. We just have it closing, and I'm sorry if it doesn't close like with that right. magnet fe feature. But now that recycles as well. That recycles as well. And we had plastic fitments to hold the product in mm -hmm. perfectly in transit and for the consumer. We don't need it. Farewell. Well, I challenged the team and said, mm -hmm. you guys need to come up with a solution. And they came up with a cardboard solution. Hmm. I think there's going to be more work on that in the future. There's, there's new sort of a, a mycelium mushroom technology mm -hmm. to grow the cardboard as opposed to the trees. Right. So challenging everyone of the team to think differently. So, I think that's pretty exciting, though. It is. It is. And actually, there's such a hunger. And, and they're yo a young team. And, and they all feel part of this mm. change. And then finally, people... Um, oh, sorry, we were on the five R's, weren't we? So we had remove, uh, reduce. I came from the era where big is beautiful, everything was large, mm. you know, put the product in this, on the window, in the shelf, and you know, so as I know, small is beautiful. Right. So reduce packaging, what don't you need? Make mm -hmm. bottles as small as possible, as well as big as possible. Right. So we're looking at all of that reduction. Then you've got reuse and refill, mm -hmm. which is where we have this project that's right. come in which is a, a complex situation because the refill bags aren't recyclable. Right. But they are reducing the amount of plastic. Mm. The reuse model, you've got how do you protect your product from, from uh, any microbes that might get in mm -hmm. there. So not as easy. Far more long-term solution. Mm -hmm. But the first two were quick. And then actually the last five are is recycle, mm. which people think right at the beginning, I'll make everything recyclable and everything will be solved. Right. When actually... The last thing we want to be doing is right. recycling. Right. So that principle really helped me. And then finally, um, people. Mm -hmm. And it's you know, the B Corp process. We're going through it with Group L'Occitan. It's incredible. You know, B Corp is all about sort of business as a force for good. Mm. And that's actually, you know, really looking at, you know, yes, there's profit, but can we look at that with people and the planet? Really holistically, really challenging. It's tough. We're in the process. We have a year to try and do it. We have all our teams working on it. Every area of the business is being challenged. Policies are being rewritten. Thinking, we're thinking in a very different way. So it's a complete change of mindset. It it's really, really exciting to hear about. I want to hear about uh, about this. Um, it's a pilot, yes. right? Tell me what, what you're looking to do. So I was introduced to two incredible people, uh, Joe and uh, Stuart Chidley who had this vision of, of collaboration and sharing and taking packaging away from being everyone's unique. Mm -hmm. I've got to be better than the next competitor with something different. Right, my package looks like this, yeah. that's what my brand stands for. And, and the bottle becomes an asset. Mm -hmm. So this bottle can be used 400 times. Hmm. 
uh, by lots of different companies. And this just, I just thought, that's change making. That's mm. thinking mm. completely differently. Why would I want to yeah. share my bottle with everyone else? Well, actually, because it's great for the environment. Right. I can have my own product in it. Yeah. It's made by me, mm. but this bottle, so the, the bottle, uh, it's just, it's in steel now, which is even mm -hmm. more durable. Mm -hmm. um, it will contain uh, cleansing, and face and body cleansing. Mm -hmm. um, and what happens is you will go into store and you will fill the bottle. Uh, well, it all does it automatically. Mm -hmm. there's, there's some fantastic machines downstairs that mm -hmm. you can have a look at. The bottle fills automatically. It's all clean. It's all incredibly, the technology behind it, it tracks. This That's little QR code yeah. doesn't track Elemis, it tracks who's used this bottle. Okay. So it has, you know, in this case, Beauty Kitchen will have used it, Elemis will have used mm -hmm. it, and Unilever will have used it. Hmm. Three completely different businesses, you know, the giant mm. Unilever, the sort of, you know, the new, new British, best British mm. brand uh, for Elemis, and Beauty Kitchen, the indie brand. Mm. But we're all going to share this bottle. So it's just unbelievable so we're working through it all we're doing all the tests mm -hmm. we have to make sure it's all health and safety tested i'm sure there's going to be little challenges along the way but so far today or yesterday was the first time i ever saw this mm -hmm. come off the line the label comes out it tracks you know the formula the batch code so it's, it hits all the health and safety elements yeah. and you can then get a pump to put on there and hopefully you use the same pump you know. Extraordinary. So I think it's the, just the start, you know, it's just the start of a, a new way of thinking. So let me put you in 2030. You have six sustainable development goals that you have achieved, right? Yes. What does that look like for you? So 2030, we hope to have achieved that all of our packaging will be recyclable or reusable. That's the mission. Mm -hmm. Uh, we hope to have achieved for 95% biodegradability, so that's really kind of challenging all our formulations. Mm -hmm. We hope all our team will be educated, but we will also have educated our consumers. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that online and we're going to be transparent. Mm -hmm. We're going to show them this journey. We're going to show the packaging where it is today, what's mm -hmm. recyclable, what's not recyclable, and where we're trying to mm -hmm. go to. So I'm hoping as well that we will have less waste We'll still have people using beautiful products. Uh, you know, I want them to be using that cleansing balm right to the end, but also in a recyclable, refillable, ideally, mm. refillable. The circular economy is Wonderful. really where we've got to be. And that they can come back with their jar and refill it in store, or they can send it somewhere to be done. And that we get that circular economy and we reduce down this waste that, we're, that the beauty industry has just gotten crazy. And we right. need to change that. So that, that's how I see it. Fantastic. Oriel Frank, thank you so much for stopping by oh, Hub Culture here in Glasgow during COP26. Thank you, Edie.